Greetings, fellow people. Uh, greetings, fellow people. Living on this planet, or potentially watching this from the future, where you're living on another planet. I don't know. I'm just in 2024. But I'm on Earth, uh, and I'm a human. So, uh, the previous video that I just recorded was the concept of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but remade. You know? I did that chocolate cake uh, analogy? Is that what it's called? Metaphor? I don't fucking know. The, the chocolate cake thing, you know? If you have a chocolate cake, but it doesn't have frosting on it, but the cake is amazing, but you want to add some frosting to it, you don't change the recipe of the cake itself. You leave the cake as is, you create a whole new recipe for the frosting, and then you add the frosting to the cake. And then you have yourself a whole new experience. Right? So, uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. What a, what a fantastic game. What a, what a flabbergastingly amazing game. It amazes me. I feel amazed that that is even a real thing in this reality. I'm grateful for it. And I went over how it could be better if it was to be remade. Now, if you're a fan of The Legend of Zelda, you're aware that this amazing game has an amazing sequel. And that sequel is going to be the focus of this video. So what is that sequel in question? Well, you probably already fucking know. Why am I doing this whole shtick? I don't know, but I'm doing it. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Oh my goodness, that is one of the video games of all time. I have replayed that so many fucking times, man. Uh, you know, just going through runs without collecting anything, going through runs with collecting everything, fucking just rolling around as Goron Link. It's amazing. Now, that game, like uh, Ocarina of Time, has not seen a remaster in like a decade at this point. It's been a long time. There's only two places that you could play this game, just like with Ocarina of Time. Either on the N64, well, three places, rather. The N64, the GameCube, which it's the same version, uh, or the 3DS. And since then, there has been absolute fuck all. Now, what I'm proposing is that there will come a time when there won't be absolute fuck-all. And there will be a remake of this game. Now, like with the last one, we're going to take that chocolate cake, we're not going to change the recipe, but we're going to add some frosting to it. So without further ado, Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, Dawn of a New Fate, is what I call it. Man, I don't, I don't know what it'll be called. Mask Edition, or something. Uh, time Edition. That doesn't make sense because that would have been better for Ocarina of Time. But it'll be called something. Remasked Edition. There you go. Remasked Edition. <clears throat> so, 
Take a moment to ponder this, will you? Toss this into the stew of your, uh, your, your conscious brain thoughts, would you? A Majora's Mask reboot uh, that takes inspiration from Darksiders 2. Now, if you watched the previous video, you, you probably understand why I'm referencing that. Uh, I'm going to recap that real quick. Uh, Darksiders 2, specifically, takes that classic Zelda formula, and it adds this open-world element to it. And it's brilliantly done. It hybridizes that classic linear gameplay with this open-world concept. So let's take that concept, apply that to Majora's Mask, and we're going to expand the map, we're going to add more masks, we're going to add more quests, we're going to add more temples, and more NPCs. Originally, I wrote here that, that a longer time cycle might be better, but eh, maybe bump it up to five days, potentially, with all the extra content. But with the song of uh, slow time, you know, if you play the song of time and, you know, just do it backwards, I feel like it would be doable even with that as it is. I don't know. Figure it out. <coughs> so... Bump the mask count from 24 to 48. Double it. There's only 24 masks in Majora's Mask. That's awesome. And that worked for a game that small. But we're going to be working with a bigger game here. So keeping the mask count the exact same would just leave it feeling dull and uh, lacking. So... <laughs> Uh, add another 24 masks, you know, come up with some shit. The water bottle mask, you know, you put it on and then you drink water or something. I don't know. Figure it out. Get creative with it. Expand each region of Termina uh, with more NPCs, more areas to explore, and add optional dungeons with new bosses that yield these new masks. Now, we have the classic four areas, you know, Swamp Mountain, Ocean Valley. Who's to say that there can't be, like, a, another little, like, you know, there's all these caves in the main game already. There's all these little holes in the ground. They're so mysterious. Where does this go? You go into the cave, and there's just, like, a couple Dodongos there. You kill them, you get some rupees, and that's it. Well, what if... Those caves had more significance. What if you went into one of those caves, and then there's two Dodongos there. You kill them, you get the rupees, and then all of a sudden, da 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 the fucking door opens on the side of the wall, and you're like, whoa, what is going on here? There's something new here. I'm going to the door, and then it leads down like a spiral staircase or something. There's like torches on the wall or whatever. You're like, whoa, what is this? You know, you keep going down, and it leads to, like, some fucking lush cave or whatever. There's glowing mushrooms and shit on the walls. Like, what is happening here? And then before you know it, you're in a new dungeon. An optional dungeon. And once you complete that, you get a new mask. You know? So, uh, let's go over those main four areas, you know? Real quick, uh, before I do that, uh, like I said, expand uh, Termina itself. Uh, like I said in the first video with Ocarina of Time, Hyrule Field, fairly barren, you know? Fairly is even an overstatement. Uh, it's very barren. And Termina, you know, it's not barren, it's just small, you know? Expand it. You know, give some more room to roll around as Goron Link in. Uh, that's like half the fun of the fucking game, is rolling around as Goron Link. Add some 
fucking parkour courses or something, where you roll up a hill and then you gotta do like a little swoop around and then there's like a ramp and then it's like, wow, like what's going on? Is, is this Tony Hawk or is this The Legend of Zelda, you know? Like, expand it, is what I'm saying. So, let's take it back down here. Let's go to those uh, four regions, you know. Swamp, Mountain, Ocean, Valley. The core four. The swamp. How could you expand the swamp? Expand the Lost Woods. I forgot what they call it in that game. It's called something else, I think. You know, add more areas to explore. You know, depending on which routes you take. You know, like I said in the Ocarina of Time video, uh, there's no reason why there's a place called the Lost Woods that only has one route. I mean, how lost can you get? You know what I mean? Make it a maze. Make it... Have there be a bunch of different fucking places that you can explore. Add an extra town within the swamps that acts as the counterpart to the Deku Palace. Now, uh, who would be occupying this town, you may ask? Well, that's already answered in the original game. Except it's not expanded upon in the original game. The story of the swamp area, if you recall, is that, uh, now I have to take a moment to recall it, uh, <clears throat> so there's, a there's like this Deku, uh, palace, and then there's a king, and then he has, uh, he has a daughter, and there's also these monkeys in the woods, and then the daughter goes missing, and I think she was exploring the, the swamp temple, and that's when she gets kidnapped by the, uh, gigantic uh, god man person warrior uh, but the Deku King uh, for whatever reason is not aware of the evil god warrior king person uh, so he blames it on the monkeys and then he kidnaps one of the monkeys and he's gonna like burn the monkey alive if he doesn't give him his daughter back you know there's like this whole political tension between this little monkey clan in the woods and uh, this established Deku Palace. Well, this is the remake. So let's expand upon that, yeah? There's a monkey palace and there's the Deku Palace. Build the political tension of the story with the Monkey King and the Deku King ready to go to war over the missing Deku Princess. You know what I mean? You have a bunch of quests that you can then do in that Monkey Town, a whole new place to explore, new quests, new stuff to do, new stuff to get. That adds a whole plethora of possibilities for the new masks. And, you know, expand the Deku Palace as well to actually feel like a palace rather than two little maze areas and, uh, like, a little commune with a campfire in the middle, you know? Make it an actual palace that you can explore. Same deal. Adds a whole new plethora of possibilities for the new masks. Expand Woodfall Temple to have a secret basement area that acts as a whole new dungeon. Like I was saying uh, with the Ocarina of Time video, you know, each dungeon would have its like alternate counterpart. Let's do that in Majora's Mask as well. So we got the Woodfall Temple, right? Underneath the Woodfall Temple would be uh, 
I don't know what the hell to call it. Figure it out. Uh, the Fallwood Temple? Uh, you know, just make the dungeon, you know, here's a, a concept. Make it themed like a, a lush cave from Minecraft, you know? We're rolling with, like, swampy themes here. We're rolling with, like, spooky, you know, mushroomy, swampy themes. You know, vines. Make it, like, super dark, you know? Very beautiful. Very, like, gothic and beautiful. Uh, but scary at the same time, because that's the whole point of, you know, the original dungeon. You know, glowing plants, glowing mushrooms, lighting the way. You know, shit like that. Something that they don't expand upon further beyond the, the one little map uh, in the, the swamps area. There's like these gigantic fucking mushrooms that you can like hop on and shit. Expand upon that. Make it more mushroomy. There you go. That's, that's the, the, the second dungeon. The first one is like swamp. The second one is mushroom. I don't know what to call it. No, I'm just throwing ideas out here. <clears throat> the second region. The mountain. Expand the map to make the entire mountain traversable. And expand it so that it is traversable with Goron Link. Make it large for that particular reason. Everybody agrees. Everybody who has played this game agrees that Goron Link is the best fucking part of this game. Just rolling around as a ball super fast across the map, it's awesome. You go fast enough, you get spikes. What? It's awesome. Play on that more. Make the entire mountain traversable. Instead of the ascent to Snowhead Temple being just a simple little spiral ice bridge, you know, like it is in the original game, make the trek a grueling journey full of obstacles and enemies, like you're climbing Mount Everest or some shit, you know? Expand Goron City to include even more side quests. There's absolute fuck all to do in Goron City. It's not even a city, it's just like one room. You know? Why is it called Goron City? It should just be called Goron Room. Make it an actual city. You know? Make the NPCs feel like they're alive. And give them individuality too. It's kind of racist, Nintendo, that the Gorons all look the same. Give them personality, you know? The, the residents of Termina all look different, but the Gorons all look the same? What's going on there, you know? Uh, add more minigames. Um, <clears throat> and uh, for the alternate dungeon, right? For the alternate dungeon, it's a snow-themed area. So what's the opposite of snow? What's the opposite of ice? What's the opposite of cold? Bada-bing, bada-boom. Fire. And you already see that a little bit at the bottom of the Snowhead Temple. That little magma area with all the pools of magma in the area, at the bottom of the temple, add another doorway there, you know? Like a secret doorway or some shit. Leads down to another set of caverns or whatever. There's, you know, where those lava pools are at the base of the Snowhead Temple. You go below that, you see those lava pools dripping into lava falls or whatever. You're, you know, you're, you're traversing these, like, ancient caves that haven't been discovered in eons, you know? Like the, the lost Goron Mines or some shit. And then that leads you to, like, the fucking 
Snowhead, the Fire Toe Temple. I don't know the Firefoot Temple. Uh, yeah, you know the Firefoot Temple. We'll we'll, we'll just roll with that. Uh, <clears throat> and make it, you know, make the entrance require, you know, like a future item to open. Make it something that you have to come back to. Because that's the whole idea of the game, right? Time loops and all that. So, uh, with the swamp one, you know, with the mushroom temple, I only make it accessible with the hook shot, right? Which you get in the third chapter in the ocean section. So you have to complete the game normally, and then uh, once you get all the items, then you can go back with all the items. And then you can access all these new areas, like Metroidvania style. So, uh, for the Firefoot Temple, you know, uh, make the entrance require the mirror shield to open. You know, you get that in the Icona Valley, it's perfect. You know, it's two chapters away, I don't know. Maybe do a different item, figure it out. Figure it out. I'm throwing ideas out there. The ocean. The ocean. Man. You know, aside from Goron Link, I feel like... Uh, honestly, I feel like it's a debate in the, in the Zelda community. Which is more fun? Rolling around as Goron Link or swimming as Zora Link? So for that reason... Mm, Make the whole o the whole ocean ah words make the whole ocean explorable. Make it all explorable. Uh, take inspiration from Paper Mario and the Origami King, you know, and turn this region into a mini Wind Waker chapter. You know, add some islands that you can swim to with some stuff on it, some things, you know? Add some masks that you can get on those islands. Add uh, new NPCs to those islands, you know? New side quests that adds to the overall, you know, expansion of the game, right? Add some underwater caves, too. That'd be awesome. Pinnacle Rock, man. That's only one tiny little area of the game where you descend into this, like, dark and spooky and murky chamber and there's all these gigantic eels that are trying to eat your face off. And that's one of the most memorable parts of the game for a lot of people. Add more shit like that. That'd be awesome. And I'm going to get into that in just a second here, you know? Um, the whole, you know, depths thing. Add a new dungeon to the basement of the Great Bay Temple, right? In that, like, giant, like, spinning water chamber, you know? At, like, the very start, at the very bottom there. Add a new door or something. And then you go in that door and then you, you have to swim down. You keep swimming down. And as you keep swimming down, it just gets darker and darker and darker. And maybe uh, with this uh, expansion of the game, add a new feature to Zora Link where uh, when you activate the energy shield, it doesn't just act as you know a, a damage technique. It also acts as a light. It emits light. And so you go down to these depths and you have a finite magic meter that you have to use in order to even fucking see where you're going. And if you run out of magic, uh, well then... Maybe there's some, like, glowing jellyfish that help you find your way to some magic jars or some shit, so it becomes, you know, not irritating. 
you figure it out, you know? But add a glowing effect to the energy shield. Add a basement to the Great Bay Temple, and that is where the new temple will be, which will be like the Abyss Temple or some shit. Uh, also, expand the lore of the seahorses, man. Like, what? There's like two seahorses in the game, and they're like completely normal seahorses, too. It's like a fantasy game. Nothing in this game is normal. Literally, on the exact same map, uh, you climb up, you know, those pine trees in that one area, and then you meet like a chipmunk that has a fucking uh, spinning wheel for an eye. Uh, who's like half chipmunk, half platypus, you know? There's also these fish people down there, and then uh, amongst all of this, you just got regular-ass seahorses? What's going on there? Expand on that more. Give them a whole underwater town to explore. New NPCs, new mini-games, new side quests, you know the deal. Get creative with it. The canyon. Expand the map to really emphasize the nature of the terrain. Canyons and valleys and whatnot. You know, with Icona Valley, there's only like one valley. Right? The map goes up, and then it goes up again, and then, um, you go by Stone Tower, and then it goes up a little bit more, and then that's it, you know? Like, uh, it, it's not really a canyon. It just looks like it, you know? Limited hardware for the N64, so I get it. But we are no longer working with limited hardware. So, uh, expand that map to actually feel like a canyon. You know? Make all of Stone Tower fully explorable. You go in that map, you know, I remember when I was a kid, that place intrigued me so much. That sparked my imagination so much, because there's like all these little cubby holes. It's like an entire, like, vertical apartment city, and you can't explore any of it. Change that. Make it explorable. Make it so that you can go into those little apartments and check out, like, the ruins of what this place used to be. Add more lore to the world. You know what I'm saying? Maybe add a few stragglers. Stragglers of which, who, if you talk to, give you side quests. That... What do they do? Give you masks if you complete those side quests. Uh, expand Icona Castle uh, to be a full blown dungeon. You know? That, uh, I mean, I'm saying don't change the cake recipe, and now I'm saying to change the cake recipe. But the Icona Castle, you know, it was very underwhelming, you know, in the original game. Memory issues, time crunch for development, like I said, I get it. It's not like that anymore, though, you know? So expand that castle and make it feel like an actual dungeon. And, uh, with uh, the boss of that castle, make it a, uh, a combat trial, you know, rather than an actual defeat, you know, like uh, with Godon in The Wind Waker, you know? That's a boss who uh, gives Link the trial of defeating him. As opposed to, you know, a big, scary, spooky boss who you have to kill. You get what I'm saying? I think I messed up the wording there, but a little, a little bit. But you get the point. Don't kill the king 
at the end of the castle, or his lieutenants, after the boss battle, turn them into NPCs with new side quests to give. And then here's another one. Here's another one. They absolutely could not do this with the limited hardware of the N64, but with modern technology, it is possible. And it would be awesome if they did this. Make all of Icona Valley explorable when it's flipped upside down. You go to the Stone Tower Temple, you get that light arrow, you shoot that red emblem on the temple, the whole fucking valley flips upside down, and you can't even go outside to explore. What's up with that? Change that. Make it so that you can explore while the whole world is upside down. Because that would be awesome. Make it canon that only Icona has this strange gravitational phenomenon, you know, so that you uh, don't fuck up, you know, the logic of, the, I mean, there's literal, like, chipmunk platypus hybrids in this game, so, you know, logic doesn't exactly have a, a solid place in this universe, but uh, make it a little bit logical, you know, make it canon that only Icona has this strange gravitational phenomenon and add that uh, to the global threat that the temple presents. You know? As if Twin Mold, you know, the, uh, the two centipedes, the two kaiju centipedes that are locked at the bottom of the temple, if they break out, then that gravity field will destroy, it will be destroyed, and then uh, the whole planet will flip into the air or something. I don't fucking know. I'm tired. I'll figure it out, you know? Expand upon it, is what I'm saying. You know? And give each boss... Uh, here's another thing. You know? Um, uh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, the warrior dude. Odoa. Goat. Gyorg. And Twin Mole. Out of those four, only, I think Adol was mentioned a little bit in the lore, but Goat is pretty much the only one that is mentioned in the lore of the game as having any kind of impact on the region, you know? Goat is the one who kills Darmani, right? Uh, with Adolwa, he kidnaps the princess, cool, but none of the townsfolk know that, so he's pretty much just a boogeyman in the story. Gyorg, never mentioned at all by any of the Zora people, and Twin Mold, same thing. I mean, there's not really any people in Icona for uh, them to be mentioned, but you know what I mean? make the bosses have more of a, a place in that reality. Like, why are they there? Why is Gyorg locked at the bottom of the Great Bay Temple? Add a lore bit to the Great Bay area that, like, the Zora folk had to fucking lock him up there because they found this cool little fish and then it kept growing and then it started eating people. They are like, ah, what's going on? Put it in the temple. You know? Make it make sense. Um, also, uh, make Skullkeeta more of a threat, too. That boss has so much buildup. You know, you get to the Icona Valley, it's all spooky. You get to the graveyard. There's crows cawing on these decrepit trees. You know, the, the sun is low, the, the, the sky is orange, and then you look in the distance, and you get closer to it, you're like, is that, what the fuck is that? And there's just this kaiju of a skeleton just resting there. And you're like, oh, that is, that is definitely a boss. 
What is that? That is 100% a boss. I want to fight that thing. What does it give me? And then you actually activate it. And then it's just an oversized Stalfos. You know what I mean? Or whatever they're called. Stalkid. Make it. Make that boss more of a threat. All that build up, and then it's literally just an oversized regular enemy. What's the deal with that? Change that. You know, make it more intense. Add more moves to his moveset. You know, make it so that you have to use multiple items to defeat him. Make the, the little spiral arena that you have to traverse to, uh, you know, because there's like that whole timer thing where if you don't uh, defeat him before you get to the top, then you know, the whole thing cancels out, you know. Make that area bigger. Expand on it. Make it better than it was before. Clock Town, man. Clock Town. I love that town. I love the I love the tune, you know? The OST to Clock Town. Fantastic. I've listened to that while working on my own game sometimes. I'm, I'm making my own game if you, if you weren't aware, which you probably weren't because there's nothing out about it yet, except for the few little cryptic mentions that I've made here and there. I'm making my own game, and I've listened to the Clock Town music while working on my game because the music is just that good. Fucking love Clock Town. Expand the town. Make it bigger. Make it better. You know how it goes at this point. Add an apartment building alongside the hotel that the residents canonically live in. I haven't done the math, uh, but I feel like with the number of rooms in the hotel, um, there are far too many residents to occupy that hotel, which means they're just NPCs who are like homeless in this town, canonically. You know? Ground it a little bit more. Give them apartments. Decorate those apartments with their personalities. And here's another huge one for Clock Town. Oh my goodness, if you don't listen to anything else in this video, at least listen to this one. Across the entire game, there is one part that has stuck with me the most. That has stuck with a lot of people. At the very beginning of the game, you go through the whole sequence where Skull Kid curses you, you become Deku Link, and then you go through that weird little cave area. And then finally, when you start to, uh, when you go through that one twisty tunnel, you know, that mysterious twisty tunnel, you end up in this little sewer area underneath Clock Tower. It's covered in moss, you know. There's water rushing to these two grates that you can't open. There's this really unique, mysterious green glow to the map. And there's nothing to do there. At all. It's just one tiny little area that has absolute fuck all in it. And for the remake... Change that. Make it so that you can open those grates on either side and explore this mysterious green sewer mossy area. Because it's awesome. And because that's the whole point of this fucking game. That's the whole point of this franchise, is just to make cool, awesome fantasy shit, right? So expand on that. Make the sewers explorable. Maybe add a whole other dungeon to that area. Also, here's an idea. 
make the whole tower explorable as well. You know, you get to that final sequence, the the last uh, hour of the the final day. You know, the door to Clock Tower finally opens, and it's like, oh shit! Like, moon's gonna fall, the apocalypse is hitting. You know, everything is in dire conditions. Uh, it's time to rush up this tower, and then you go up the stairs, and it's just like a little transition. You know, boop, boop, boop. and then you're at the top. What's all that about? Come on. I get it, hardware limitations, but if you're doing a remake, don't just make it a little bup, 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 and then you warp to the top. Make it so that you can actually explore the inside of that tower. Make it a journey to get to the top of that tower. And here's the last point here. You know, I mentioned uh, in the Ocarina of Time video. There's all these new things, there's all these expansions, right? Now, if you got to the final boss and it was just the same as it was, that would just... It wouldn't be satisfying, you know? It's like, what the... I did all this work and the ending to the game is the exact same? What's going on here? So here's my proposal. Reinvent the final battles with Majora to accommodate the four transformation masks. I'm surprised that this wasn't a thing already. Kind of doesn't make sense that it wasn't a thing. It kind of was in uh, the remake, you know. They uh, they required the the Deku mask to uh, uh, defeat the first phase, but after that, it's pretty much all the same. Phase one, Majora's mask would. Like I said, require the Deku Mask to defeat, even more so than the 3DS remake. Phase 2, Majora's Incarnation, would require the Goron Mask to defeat. You know? Phase 3, Majora's Wrath, which initially was the final battle, would require the Zora's Mask to defeat. And now, like I said, what fun would it be if this game ended the same? What fun would it be if there wasn't a fourth stage? So you got Majora's Mask, you got Majora's Incarnation, you got Majora's Wrath, Stage 4 would just be Majora. And Majora wouldn't necessarily require the Fierce Deity Mask to defeat. But the idea that I'm proposing is that wearing the Fierce Deity Mask would turn the battle into an equal fight. Where it would still be difficult, but you stand a lot more of a chance than if you weren't wearing the super-powered god mask. Without the mask, the battle would be like a Dark Souls battle, and you would get absolutely screwed over. Which further adds to the motivation to, you know, 100% the game and get that Fierce Deity's mask. So... That's my proposal for the remake of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This is a game that is near and dear to many people's hearts. It's a game that is very near and dear to my heart. And I would love to see this game, even if it was just a complete remastered, you know? 
Even if it was just a graphical upgrade with like a few little performance issues, you know, that were increased, I would still buy the shit out of it. But why would you just improve the visuals when you could create a whole new masterpiece? Especially when you're more than capable of it. That's all I'm saying. So like I said in the first video, should the folks at Nintendo ever watch this, you are entirely welcome to use each and every one of these ideas free of legal boundaries. I don't give a shit. This is out to the world. You know? You don't have to give me credit. Don't put my name in the credits if you don't want to. If you're that concerned about being sued. I'm not going to sue you. I just want you to have some creative inspiration because clearly you guys are struggling a little bit right now. And that's not an insult. That's just artist to artist. You know what I mean? That's all for this video. I hope you have a wonderful moment. I hope these games get made. Because they deserve to get made. The people deserve to experience this. The Zelda community deserves to experience this. And even if I die before I can play any of these games, I will... I wouldn't be resting if I was a just a spirit. I would exist peacefully in the after knowing that I made even the slightest contribution to what the evolution of those titles could be. So that's all for this video. I hope you have a wonderful moment. I bid you adieu.